Good morning, good morning. Hey, we're going to go ahead and get started just a little bit early today. We have a lot going on on campus, and uh, in just a few minutes you're going to see some exciting things from Vacation Bible School, from our kids' camp. Somebody's going to be baptized, and I'm going to let them share that. Hey, this past Wednesday we baptized a mom and a daughter. Are they here this morning? If you are, will you wave at me? Are y'all here today? They're not here. Okay, so we, we celebrated that. We're fixing to do that again. Before we do that, I'm going to ask Christina House and her family to stand. Where are you guys at? Right there in the middle. They have two children. They have Rosalind and Jordan. Where are you at, Jordan? Stand up, Miss Jordan. That's okay right there. She's kind of scared. I understand. Hey, been sharing with them in Sunday school today. Hey, would you help me do something? Celebrate them becoming a part of the family here at First Baby Center Star. Love y'all. And we're praying for you and ask God to bless you. And then one of the special things about church is seeing young people come to faith in Christ. And our, our whole ministry or our motto or our, our motive is so that people can come to faith in Christ. And so this morning we're celebrating part of that. So I want you to listen and then I want you to watch the screen. Good morning, church family. We are thankful that you've joined us for worship today. And we're excited about our baptism. At this time, would you please draw your attention to the baptistry with student minister Christian Jordan. Being baptized today is Colton Poss. Colton's mom and dad are Chelsea and Trey Poss and grandmother Vicki Williams. Colton is seven years old and he told me just a while ago, I'm going to be eight on the 28th of July. Colton has been involved in our children's ministry for a while now, and while visiting another VBS this summer, Colton was saved. Colton was extremely excited about sharing his decision with his family and friends at FBCCS. And Colton, my little brother, we are so extremely excited to be sharing this moment with you. If you are family and friends of Colton, would you please stand now so we can rejoice with you as well. Boy, it got real bright up here all of a sudden. I'll tell you what, that was eye-opening. Golly. My, my eyes got adjusted to the blue. and Bam, man, that just hit me around the face. All right, man, I hope everybody's had a great day uh, today and a great week this past week. And hope everybody's got a lot of plans and fun set aside for the 4th of July. I'm going to ask if you would please stand with us and let's sing this song together. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you, I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my
seated this morning. Man, we're glad you're here. Got a great crowd. We've already had a good service at 8.30 this morning. If you're visiting with us, we also have an early service, and so we had a great time there. Hey, just a few facts real quick, like we're going to move on this afternoon at 6 o'clock. We're going to be having a celebration for America, our fun, our food, our fellowship. We have made the call to move it inside. Looks like rain and storms are probably on the horizon, rather than setting up out there and then having to run in here. So we're going ahead and move that in here at 6 o'clock. We will have food in the Family Life Center, hamburgers and hot dogs and things of that nature. I heard somebody may be bringing potato salad and beans and um, watermelon. So if you want to do that, we'd love to have you do that, okay? So meet us tonight. promise it's going to be fun. And then around darkish, somewhere between 8.30 and 9, we're not going to wait too late. We'll have a phenomenal fa um, uh, fireworks show. I'll get it out in just a moment. So please don't miss that tonight. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great time to be here and be a part of the family okay hey remind you we have our fireworks stand if you hadn't gone by there uh, please go by there and visit that and if you're going to buy some please please you're helping our cs students working and doing some things for mission work around the world so please do that if you don't mind hey remind you that as uh, because july the 4th the office will be closed on tuesday and then there'll be no wednesday night service so please remember that we'll do calling post later and let you know that hey we made a little decision talk to josh uh, we, we've all celebrated America. A few weeks ago, we did flags. Today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to celebrate our spiritual freedom. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful I'm free in Christ. Amen? Amen. And because of his shed blood. Now, give the Lord a hand. Amen? That's a good place to clap right there. Hey, we are uh, today going to be singing, and we're going to be sharing about spiritual freedom in Christ. We thank God for our country. Matter of fact, l listen to this verse, Psalms 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And we celebrate that, but today we also want to remind you who we are in Christ. And so our songs and message will be related to some of that, and so ask God to bless them. Hey, before we pray in just a moment, got a couple of families we need to remember. Miss Julie Solly lost her dear mom this week, so we'll be praying for them and the girls and their service will be next Saturday. So pray that God, and we'll do a call and post on this. So Miss Julie, we love y'all and praying for you. And then also sadly, I got a call yesterday morning, Angie Brandon, went over to her mom's and found her dead and um, said she went out with her on Friday night. Everything was good. They're not sure what happened, but uh, passed away yesterday morning, and we'll be hearing, uh, hopefully, as soon as we have that information, we'll be sharing with you as well. So pray for Miss Angie and for Miss Julie and ask God to give them a blessing. Aren't you glad that even in death we're more than conquerors through Christ? 
and we don't walk through the valley of the shadow of death alone. The Lord is there with us. So our hearts and our prayers are with you, Miss Julie, and the girls and your family, okay? But, hey, we're glad you're here. If you're a guest on our campus, man, we're excited you're here today. Would you all thank God for all of our guests who may be here today? Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you for being here today. We hope you're encouraged by the worship music. Also, the baptism. Wasn't that good? Man, just a... Is he already back? Hey, big guy. Hey, I asked him. I said, man, all eyes are on you. And he went, so? <laughs> I mean, the dude ha is absolutely fearless. So, Colton, you the man, son. I mean, he really was. So, we're celebrating. We'll have several more that we'll baptize in a few more days, okay? So, hey, we're going to pray. Then I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Father, we just pause for a moment to thank you for your blessings as being citizens of a one of the greatest countries that really has ever been in history. And we celebrate that, but we realize that without you, just because we're Americans doesn't mean we're free. So, Father, we celebrate the spiritual freedom that we have in Christ today. Make that known. But we do thank you for these United States of America. We pray for Julie and her family. We pray for Angie and hers as they walk through that very difficult, difficult time of death. So we pray you'd wrap your arms around them, love them, and let them know they're prayed for and be with them. Thank you for our guest today. Minister, as only you can in Jesus' name. And all the church said... Amen. Hey, do me a favor. Let's stand for just a moment. Remember, we've got a phenomenal crowd for July, the second service. We do me a favor. J don't go too far. Turn around and shake about three hands right there. And then we got some more great music for you. Jesus paid it all me. 
this song right here. I talked in the first first service. This is a powerful song that everybody can associate with. Because everybody's went through something at some point in their life that they carried around with them. Some kind of burden, some kind of stress, some kind of anxiety. Regardless whether it is, whether some people think it's big or some people may think it's a small thing in the eyes of the world. But I can guarantee you this, that it, everybody's got something that's weighing on them at some point in their life. And the whole time, Jesus says to cast all our cares upon him because he knows and we know he loves us. And that's what this song's about. We just need to take it all to him. Let go of all of our stress and our anxieties and get freedom from those things and just cry out to him and give it all to him. That's what this whole thing's about. Y'all sing it with me. To everyone who's lost someone they love Long before it was their time You feel like the days you had were not enough When you said goodbye And to all of the people with burdens and pains Keeping you back from your life you believe that there's nothing and there is no one who can make it right. There is hope for the helpless, rest for the weary, and love for the broken heart. There is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing, who meet you wherever you are. Cry out to Jesus, cry out to Jesus, for the marriage that's struggling just to hang on, they lost all of their faith and love, they've done all they can to make it right again, still it's not enough. For the ones who can't break the addictions and chains You try to give up, but you come back again Just remember that you're not alone in your shame and your suffering There is hope for the helpless, rest for the weary And love for the broken heart there is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing. He'll meet you wherever you are. Cry out to Jesus. When you're lonely and it feels like the whole world is falling on you, you just reach out, you just cry. To the widow who suffers from being alone, wiping the tears from her eyes. For the children around the world without a home, say a prayer tonight. There is hope for the helpless, rest for the weary, and love for the broken. Yeah. 
to tell you something. We cry out to Jesus with all these burdens and all these things that we carry around with us. But I'm going to tell you, he's got amazing grace. He's going to, he's going to give us stuff that we don't deserve. And he's going to take the burdens away from you. He's going to lift all the chains off of you. You don't have to carry around all that heavy stuff. You, 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 know, you, don't ha- you can get freedom from those things through him. Let's sing this song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my Everybody just close their eyes. I feel like everybody should know this song pretty well. Let's just all sing this song together in one accord and sing it out to him. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me.
Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for your amazing love and for your amazing grace. You're such a good God, and we just praise you for everything that you are. We're just so humbled by how amazing and awesome that you are, that you would love us so much that you would send down your only son, your only begotten and perfect son, to die on a cross for us so you can take and your blood can cleanse us from all our sins and unrighteousness. We just praise you for who you are, and we just thank you for Jesus. And I pray that you would just help each one of us here to have an open heart and open eyes and open mind to be receptive of the things that you want us to get out of the message today. And I pray that you be with Brother Ronnie and give him the speaking grace that he needs to be able to get your word and your message across to us. And I just thank you so much for Jesus dying on the cross. Please forgive my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, amen. You may be seated. Hey, while you're being seated, find your place to Matthew 6, number 13. We're going to preach today on a challenging culture. Uh, I, I kind of really wish I'd have said this. What do you do in a challenging culture? What do you do when the culture that is around you, whether at work or at home or at play or at school or at college, when the culture around you is so anti-Christian or non-biblical, what do you do? Well, Matthew chapter 6 is an interesting verse. And, and it just says something to us, and then I want to show you my favorite pet in the world. How many of y'all have pets here? Would you raise your hand? All right, let's do some. How many of y'all, your pets are dogs? Raise your hand. And for the rest of you weirdos, how many of you have cats? <laughs> Why? All right. I, I know some of you, but I, I have this pet that, uh, or, uh, we'll show it in a minute. Y'all hold on just a minute. So if you squeamish, kind of get close to your husband. If you, you, know, you know, if you're one of those that just kind of don't, anyhow, you're going to understand in just a moment. And uh, so I want to read this, and I want to show you this picture, and I want to give you a thought about it that the guy told me when we did this. Listen to this. So think about the culture we live in. We don't even know what a man and a woman is. But when I grew up, we had two bathrooms, his and hers. And all the church said, we, we, we don't even, we have to argue about that, really? So, so listen to this. Matthew 6, 13, they're praying the prayer, and do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from, would you say that word? Evil. All around us. Hey, show the picture we have here. A few years ago, I was up in Kentucky uh, or Ohio somewhere, and uh, somebody brought out a pet snake. Her name is Lucy. She is a 17-foot albino reticulated python. Now, let me tell you this story. We're standing there, and they come out with this snake. And, again, if, if they were standing here, she'd stretch almost from, from those stairs, probably longer over there anyhow. So what you can't see behind, if you look to the far right, there's a guy in a blue shirt. There's four other grown men holding the back of this snake. So when I tell you she's a lizard, she's a lizard. I mean, this is a big old girl. And so um, they come out, they had Lucy, and he said, anybody want to hold her? And you know what my grandson Parker said? Yeah, I do. And he said, what part? He said, the head. So I either had to man up <laughs> or chicken out. Y'all all right? Now, I've always had an infatuation. I don't go to, I'm not coming to your house and catch snakes. I'm not, I don't do any of that. But So when they brought her out, <clears throat> they, they, they came over and he said, Mr. Jones, before you hold her head, I need to give you some instructions. I said, please. <laughs> I need a lot of them. He said, today, have you held a dog, a cat, or a chicken? And I said, no, no, sir, not that I know of. He said, well, if you've held anything like that, sometimes what happened is, is when she smells that, she automatically goes into what? Feeding mode. And so we try to make sure that now she's been fed, she's not too hungry. Now, again, there's five grown men holding this thing. And he said, so we just want to make sure that she doesn't get hungry and use you as a snack. And I said, that would be so nice. <laughs> that would be so wonderful. So uh, you don't see the whole thing. So she, her head eventually gets to about right here. She has red eyes, about the color of this brother's shirt, red eyes, and that tongue is just, just you know, she's looking right at me. She's right here, ends up right here. And he says, now, <clears throat> if she goes up your arm, she will go around your neck. If you let her, she'll go up around your neck, curl up, and probably go to sleep. And I said, not in this life. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And so um, he said, here's what you do. When her head gets to an uncomfortable place on your body, here's what you do. Now, you can see my right hand has her right under her, what they call the girth, right there in the middle. And he says, what you do is take your left hand, put it gently under her chin, and pick her chin up and just move it away. And I said, so what if she doesn't want me to do that? He said, well, I'll step in. 
So here's, here's what you know. We, we live in a world where there's these things that you need to do, but there's some things that you what? Don't need to do. Jesus said in the model prayer, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I'm glad there was somebody to tell me what to do, but I'm glad there was somebody there to tell me what not to do because this snake could easily take your life. Hey, well, that being said, I, we're going to show you a little funny clip. Think about this for a moment. Just see if you can imagine yourself in this clip somewhere. It's real funny. Enjoy this for just a moment. No, it's not a snake, so you're all right. I've heard this one. They say, yeah, I'm done with church. They're just going to give it to the devil. Yeah, yep. that's not as smart as you think it sounds. That'd be like me saying, went to the gym the other day. Would you believe it? I saw some people there that were totally out of shape. <laughs> I'm not going to the gym anymore. sustain it but so the lord can change us i've noticed going going to the gym there's some people in there they are fit and solid and there are other people that are on the extreme other end of the scale this is kind of like church some people walk in close with the lord and have been for a long time and someone else is just rolling in who's it for for both Yes, and Jesus said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us new. And I think there's three or four takeaways. We, we probably won't get through with all of these today. Uh, I was just spending some time before the Lord the other day, and, and these just they didn't magically appear, but these were just some things that I just felt like, hey, as Christians, what can we do to stand in this culture? I, I want you to just read this statement with me. What can I do as a Christian to be what God wants me to be in this ever-changing, carnal culture? culture so what can you do and what shouldn't you do when they put that snake's head in my arm I realize this is over my weight class I've held rattlesnakes six seven foot long I used to hunt them in Mississippi and it, it just you know they were they could bite you and kill you but you, you had ways to take care of that y'all know what I'm talking about but that wouldn't take care of that and so I had to have somebody who was an expert to step in and say hey before you touch this snake, here's some things you do, here's some things you don't do. Don't do a sudden jerk. Don't move real quick. Just be real still. Let her just kind of move around. But when she gets to the place where you're no longer comfortable, then just gently remove her head. So Jesus said, in this world that we live in, pray that. Hey, I want to give you four takeaways from that. And again, some of these will probably come next week. Number one, if we're going to be delivered from evil and be careful in temptation, the first thing I think we all have to agree on is this. We need to learn to stand on the truth. Stand on the truth. Listen, this book is not a book of suggestions. It's not a bucket list of things to check off that you ought to do. This is God's inspired word. And so when we read the word, when we read scripture, when we stand on this, and by the way, this does determine what we do and what we don't do. This does determine what we believe and what we don't believe. I'll go further. This determines where we go and we don't go. This determines what we say and what we do not say. So the Bible is the Word. So if we want to have somebody to instruct us in this very dangerous, carnal world, what can we do? Well, a couple of things, number one. Remember this under this statement right here. Culture may say one thing, but if God's Word says another, then we're going to stand on what God's Word says. And the church said, yes. What does culture say? Culture says yes about a lot of things that the Bible does say no to. I want you to listen to me very carefully. I don't care if the world says it. I don't care if the majority says it. I don't care if the Supreme Court says it. If God said no, then it is no. So what we have to be careful about is this. In a culture that is changing all the time, and sometimes they try to pressure you. Sometimes you're in a classroom. Sometimes you're at work, and, and they make fun of you. When I got back from the Southern Baptist Convention, I was playing tennis, and a guy said, I can't believe that you went out there and a bunch of preachers and you did this. Well, we believe the Bible is true. So I don't care what culture says. I don't care what culture falls, how it deems and determines things to be unintellectual or non-intellectual or whatever it is. 
I want you to listen to me very careful. The culture does not determine what we believe. We have the Word of God, and the Word of God tells us do this, and the Word of God tells us don't do that. So I want to say to you this morning, be careful when you are pressured, and you can be pressured by this culture. By the way, I'm going to tell you, sometimes when you stand on the Word, you may pay for it. That there may be cultural consequences when you say, I'm not going to do that. I don't live like that. And they make fun of you and they laugh at you and they call you a fuddy-duddy or a Bible thumper or whatever they do. I don't know about you, but one day, listen to me carefully, I'm not going to stand before them. I'm going to stand before God. And the Bible says we're going to give an answer for how we have understood this truth. Now, we probably all have different interpretations of some of the things in Scripture, but I think God makes some things pretty clear. And when He does... Remember, the culture does not determine who we are, what we do, and what we believe. The majority does not determine that. Number two, and I, I want to get real personal with you here. Not only culture, but what about you? Because sometimes you have a thing called flesh. Do we have that up there, my brother? Yeah, there you go. Carnal flesh. We got any carnal people in here? Don't raise your hand. Yeah. You ever, you ever, your flesh just ever say, hey, I want that. I like that. Yes. That's why Jesus died, because we all have problems. Not only the culture, but then we've got to deal with our self. Listen to what Jesus said. But pray that you do not lead, go into temptation, but God, when we do, deliver us from evil. Every one of us in, in this room have a compulsion. We all have carnality. We all have sinful, if we want to call them urges, whatever phrase you want to use there. So when we're standing on the Word and the culture says it's okay, and even it may sound good to you, but if God's Word says no, then as biblical born-again people, we need to stand on the Word of the living God. So I'm going to say today, sometimes that can be real hard. When you're in a classroom, again, you're, you're somewhere in a group of people and maybe you used to have friends and y'all used to do all kinds of certain things and then you get saved and you get right with God and you still love them and you still want to be around them, but you know that your life has changed. Sometimes it can be difficult when you say, hey, I'm not going there anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. And all of a sudden, the conversation changes and it can get real hard. Hey, Jesus said, don't lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil. When uh, Lucy's head got about right there, I was doing good. I, I, I was okay. I wasn't good, but I was okay. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And so it, it's kind of like that moment when you go under, and I know y'all do it because I've seen some of you. You go under a yellow light, and you're not, light and you're not sure it's going to turn red, so rather than stop and you punch the gas. How many of y'all do that? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, let's take a chance. Wham! Amen? And, and man, your heart's pumping and you're sweating. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm sweating now. I think I'm menopausal. Man, this is tough. There's something going on up here. <laughs> Can I do that? Hey, so in this world, when, and, and when her head got there and those red eyes, just she wouldn't take her eyes off of me. It's like, yeah, you look like a Big Mac. <laughs> I mean, really did. And, and I went, man, so finally we just had to ease it away. Hey, there's some things you're going to have to be willing to separate from. There's some things you're going to have to be willing to say no to, to be obedient to the will of God, and I'll get into that more in just here in a minute, okay? So Jesus said, in the world that you live in, pray that you don't enter temptation, but when it comes, pray that God will deliver you. Number two, and I think this is paramount, this is imperative, not only do we stand on the truth, but we must walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. You know the book of Ephesians says, and be ye filled with the Spirit. That in the Greek is an aorist tense. It means it's a command. It's not, it's an action verb. Be being filled. Continue being filled. It's like your car. You put gas in at one time, but it's going to run out, so you have to do it again and again. And so the Bible gives us divine instructions that as Christians, not only are we standing on the truth, but we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm learning to build a culture. So number one, notice the Bible says he fills us. Hey, listen to this verse in, the, in John's Gospel, chapter 2, I believe it. It says this, Jesus said, I did not come to baptize you with water, but with the Holy Spirit and fire. Wow, that's an interesting concept, isn't it? We all enjoyed the baptism, didn't we? Yes. But the Bible says there's a Holy Spirit baptism where we get saved. We're literally baptized, Romans 6, into the family of God. Now, listen to me carefully. As we continue to walk in the Lord, we need to continue be being filled over and over. I think I told the funny little story here. There's a lady came up during revival, and 
Sunday night, she said, Pastor, pray I'm, I get filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, okay, and they prayed. Monday night she came, and Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, and Thursday night, and Friday night. So on Friday night, she came for the sixth time. and said, Pastor, please pray I'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, well, sis, I've already prayed for you five times. She said, yeah, I know, but I leak a lot. Anybody here leak? Yes. So we're being filled with the Holy Spirit. If we're going to confront the culture or if we're going to be able to walk in this culture, we're going to have to learn to stand on the word, the truth. But I'm going to tell you, we're going to have to learn to allow the Holy Spirit. Hey, I love to alliterate, and so I like my letters to match. Couldn't find another word. Here it is. He also fillets us. Is that not good? Um, I did this, and Jackie, uh, not Jackie, Lisa said, is that word fillet? <laughs> I said, yeah. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, what, what do you do with a fillet? You open something up. Very simple, isn't it? Hey, hey l l listen, when's the last time you just opened yourself and said, Lord, would you just examine my heart and my life and my mind? And God, I want to open myself up to the Holy Spirit. And God, if there's any place in my life where I need to continue being filled, and we do that, by the way, that's our whole life. I, uh, I kind of uh, used to be a Titanic buff. I hadn't looked into it years and years, but they said what happened when the Titanic struck that iceberg on the kind of on the right side just below the water line was that there were water chambers underneath that ship in the bow and in, in the bottom and what happened was that water filled up the first one and the boat got lower and then as it got lower the water kept filling and it kept filling and filling until the weight of the ship got greater than the buoyancy and what happened to the Titanic was the ship that they said not even God could sink she sunk to the bottom Hey, I pray that I'm so filled with the Holy Spirit that I open my life. I am filleted by the Spirit of God so much that, man, hey, hey, heaven fills me up so much that as one guy said, I become so heavenly good, I'm no earthly good anymore. That only happens when we walk in the Word, but when we're being filled consistently with the Holy Spirit, and that's important. I'll make a big point about that in just a moment. So God helped me to be filled with the Spirit, helped me to recognize I can't do this on my own. I can't do it. Listen, if they had placed that 17-foot snake in, in my arms by myself, there would have been a wrestling match, and I promise you I would have lost. But there was a professional handler there who knew what to do, and he knew what to do. And I'm glad the Holy Spirit comes alongside and baptizes and fills us, and he's the one who gives direction and help and encouragement, and he fills us up. So even in this world where there's all this mess, we can walk with the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I need him more and more. Amen? So God, fill me. Fillet me. Open my life up, God. If there's an error in my life that I'm disobedient, God, show me. Help me to come to recognize that and do it. Hey, I put a third one here, and I think this is really important. Not only filling and filleting, but this is it. The Holy Spirit helps me fulfill God's purpose in life. Sometimes, can I just be honest with you as pastor? I don't know what to do. So what, 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 do we, what direction do we need to go in? I don't know. So what do we need right now? I don't know. So it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us these things. Remember Jesus said, now when you're in the world, you're going to face all these things. It, it's impossible not to. They're all around. You can't avoid them, ladies and gentlemen. They're there. So as we walk in the world being filled and opened up by the Spirit, then God helps us to become the people, the person that He wants us to be. To help these situations, all right? So number one, are you walking on the Word? Walking in the Word? Are you living by God's divine standards? Number two, are you trying to live in the Holy Spirit? Trying to open your life up to the fullness and the wellness of the Holy Spirit so that He might be glorified. Hey, I'm going to start the third one. We're not going to finish. We're going to get to one. And then we're going to finish the rest of this in the next couple of weeks. Not, not only do I stand on truth, I think we all understand that, do we need the consistent help of the Holy Spirit being filled and filleted and fulfilling His purpose. Number three, and this is so important, learn to speak in love. This is an important one. Um, <laughs> I learned saying, hey, good snake, didn't work. <laughs> nice snake, pretty snake, didn't mean anything to her. She didn't speak my language. Hey, nice, nice. <laughs> That's far enough. Hey. You know, y'all know what I'm saying? Don't act like y'all wouldn't been doing the same thing. Hey, I was in uh, my first college course. Dr. Smith was a uh, history teacher. 
and I was very immature in my faith, very immature, and I, I thought I knew everything, I really, and, and still do a lot of times, I guess, but I just thought I knew everything, and I was very arrogant in my faith. Last week, Josh reminded us that how we respond to situations are important, our response. And some of y'all won't know this, the older class, old, older group, Will, how many of y'all remember General Patton, George Patton, any of y'all remember that name? He was rough. This guy served under him, and he was rough. And he would come into class, and he would make rude comments, and he would curse, and he, he would just do things to kind of shock you and make him look big. And, and man, I'd been in there about four or five days, and I didn't had about all that I could handle. And I did not handle this right. I'm making a confession to you. So he told something real ugly one day, and all the class was just laughing, hoo ha 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 So I waited. Everybody got through, and this is what I did. Ha, ha, ha. I was on the front row about where Brother Walton is right there. He looked at me with those same eyes that snake did. I kill you. And he could have. Listen to me real careful. That was not the right response. I did it in front of everybody. I embarrassed him. I really did. Now listen to me. A mature believer would have went to him in private and said, hey, Dr. Smith, I'm a Christian and just want you to know some of that. Now it's probably not going to stop it. But that would have been better than doing that in front of everybody else. Everybody understand what I'm trying to say? Listen to me real careful. Just because people are wrong, it does not give you the right to respond in arrogance and in judgmental attitudes. Everybody all right? Think about that for just a moment. So when I speak or when I respond, it's important how I respond to sinful situations. You're going to run into them. You can't avoid it. But you can control how you respond so let's put that number a up there so when i get in a situation i want the spirit to control not the situation to control that can be hard would you agree have you ever been at work somebody disagreed with you yeah you've been in classroom somebody made fun of your faith yes your flesh wants to say hey i'm right and you're wrong can i be real biblical i'm going to heaven you're going to hell that is not a good response. So as a Christian, as a child of God in a culture that is telling me I can no longer call a him a him and a her a her, I got a problem with that. But there is a way to respond and there's a way what? Not to respond. I need to learn to do it with grace, mercy, and love. By the way, I hadn't always been right with God either, and he's the one who's been gracious and kind to me. And I want to be the same way to other people who, whom I disagree with. I think they're wrong. I think they need to get right with God. But at the same time, I want to respond in such a way. Now, listen carefully. Don't let the situation control it. Let the Spirit control it. You can do that if you're willing to do it. Don't let the situation control what happens. So when I'm dealing with people, number one, Remember, I've been in the Word. What does the Bible say about my tongue? You ever read James? About that poison little member of your body? Uh, how many of you ever, ever said something, wish you'd take it back? I mean, I just suck it back in your mouth. Yes. Man. So God helped me to walk in the Word. Lord, help me to be filled with your Spirit so that when I come into situations that are beyond my control, we live in a world that is out of control. God, how can I respond? In a way that will be honorable to you. Hey, this happened a few years ago, seven or eight years ago. I was at the office one day. and some reason, I was by myself, and um, I, I can't remember. Anyhow, I was there, and the phone rang, and I answered it. Now, I'm as innocent as I can be. <laughs> Y'all believe that, right? And the guy on the other end I thought was a joke, and this is what he said. Hey, do you, would you marry two guys? Now, you got to respond, right? He's asking me a question. How, how do you respond to that? So, now hold on, brother. <laughs> Go get your own church. So here's what your wonderful, spirit-filled pastor did. I said, yeah. I married a horse and a dog last week. I thought it was a joke. I said, I married a cat to a kangaroo. I married a bird to a snake. I'll marry anything. It got legs, wings, bird, whatever it's got. Well, I thought it was a joke. 
He said, really? He said, that's, fine. that's pretty rude of you. And I said, well, uh, are you serious? He said, yeah, I'm serious. I'm a UNA student, and I'm sitting in a room a whole full of people, and we're looking somewhere to get married. Do you think he wanted to keep talking to me? Hmm. I, I, again, I didn't know. If I'd have known, I'd say something different. But can I say something? And I want y'all to listen to me real careful. I'm getting more of those conversations. I have a grandson. I have a granddaughter who's bisexual. And uh, they want to get married. So do you say, well, they're going to hell? No. You try to, by grace and mercy, respond lovingly. Even though I will not marry them, could I just share some things with you? There is a right way to respond, and there is a wrong way to respond. Can I just tell you today, it's important how you respond. Your facial expressions when people, listen, you're going to meet more and more of them. They're out there. It's not going to change. Listen, the world isn't getting better, it's getting worse. And so as we walk in this world, did Jesus say, pray that we enter not into temptation. We all have flesh. God delivers from evil. But I'm going to tell you, there's going to come some times if the Holy Spirit isn't controlling your life, you're going to have a hard time, even as a Christian, having the right kind of conversation. I mean, really. What do you tell a young wife when she comes and says, I don't love my husband anymore? What do you say? It's okay? No. Stand on the word. So the Holy Spirit is there to control. So uh, um, the snake Lucy got too close for comfort. Now Parker's in front of me. He can't see what's going on behind him. And I'm going, I'm scared to move. You know, he said, don't move too quick. And so I'm, I'm kind of, <laughs> and so he said, he said, I'm telling you what happened because he, I, you know, I don't want to let him know I'm a chicken. <laughs> he still thinks my Paul's the baddest man in the world. He took that 17 foot snake, wrapped it around his head, threw him in the air, and <laughs> amen. Oh, y'all, can I tell you, every nerve in my body, and that little tongue kept, you know, you know what I'm, y'all I'm saying? She just wouldn't quit. It's like she's saying Big Mac, Big Mac, French fries, chocolate shake. All in one. Here, here, here's what he said. Remember what I told you? Take your left hand, gently slide it under her chin, and move it. Jesus is saying, remember what I said? You're going to go out there, and that culture doesn't understand me the way you do. And they don't appreciate this word the way you do. So here's the question. What are you going to do? I hope and pray that as Christians we will learn to be less judgmental. I didn't say accepting. Less judgmental and more loving like Christ. Um, been blessed to be able to speak to a lot of places. Been very blessed. Got a busy schedule coming up. Y'all pray for us. Get to do some travel in the next couple months. Um, but it's not uncommon, and I don't mind saying this in this room. Mom, Dad may need to have a talk with your boy or girl. It's not uncommon when I go to speak, especially if there's a lot of young people there. Somewhere in that conversation, I'll probably say something like this. Hey, do you know when uh, I got married, my wife and I were virgins? And a lot of young people, you know what they do? Snicker. They think it's funny. Last time I checked, Fornication's a sin. You all right? Do we still believe the Bible? Last time I checked, adultery is sin. Is homosexuality a sin? But so are the others. You don't get to pick and choose. So when you stand on the word, sometimes it gets really hard. It gets really quiet like it is right now. Because you're trying to honor God with your life. 
1 Corinthians 13 says, I don't care what you give. I don't care what you do. If you don't do it in love, it doesn't mean a thing. So today, as we live in a world that is changing, and I, boy, these young people, I pray for you guys. Y'all face some things I never dreamed of. I'm glad the Holy Spirit's there to give us strength. And all the church said, yeah. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, I want to pray for people in the room today. Many probably feel like that man in that video, hypocrites, yes. Lord, I went out in the world and faced with a situation and rather than saying I love you, I said something mean or ugly or unkind. And Lord, in that relationship, rather than being holy, my flesh got the better of me. And Boy, we could just go on and on, couldn't we? I got caught doing something at work the other day and I just ball face lied I just lied wow so easy isn't it Jesus said pray that you enter not into temptation but Lord would you deliver us from evil guys we live in an anti-Christian culture today but that should not change who we are it should not change who we are. As hard as it is, and it's hard when you look at family and friends and have to say, but the Bible says. It's hard. I know it is. So Lord, today give us the strength of the Holy Spirit to love people even when they disagree. Even when they disagree. God, give us grace. If you're here today, you've never been saved. Could I give you an invitation moment? Come to Christ. Right where you are, ask Christ to come in your heart. Repent of your sin. And say, Lord, I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. Come into my life. Change me. Like little Colton. Lord, have your way in my life. Christian friend, maybe this week's been one of the worst weeks of your life. You just, time and time again, you just made a bad decision. and Feel like that hypocrite. Why would anybody look or listen to me? I understand. Been there. Lord, give us grace today to speak in love even when it's hard. To do the right thing when it would be easier to do the wrong thing. So Lord, have your will. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the church said, Amen. Hey, let, let me tell you something kind of cute, and then we're out of here. Um, years ago, one of my favorite preachers uh, was at an airport. There was a big snowstorm coming in, and uh, they were canceling flights, and he had to go preach somewhere, and his flight was going to make it. But many flights were canceling, and people were getting mad, and only one person was left loading luggage. Everybody had left because of the storm, and it, it was just terrible. And the guy ahead of him was very rude and mean and ugly, and the guy loading his bags, man, he was swearing at him. He said, if I was your boss, I'd fire you. You're terrible. You're slow, blah, blah, blah. It was just, I mean, so many people, he was doing the best he could. So anyhow, this preacher is standing behind him, and he's listening to this conversation. This guy's just wearing him out, and he's just smiling. He said, yes, sir, I understand. Yes, sir, I understand. Yes, sir, I know. I know. Didn't, didn't strike back, didn't scream back, didn't do it, just said, yes, sir, yes, yes, sir, I know. So this preacher now gets up to this guy, and he says, sir, could I just say something to you? He said, yes, I'm a preacher, and I don't know if I could have responded that way. I probably would have been mean and ugly and just want you to know what you just did was very admirable. He said, well, do you see that guy getting on that plane to New York? He said, yeah. He said, his bags are going to L.A. <laughs> Hey, don't, you don't ever know who you're ticking off, right? So you might, might want to be careful how you respond in Jesus' name. Amen. Be great. Hey, remind you two or three things tonight, 6 o'clock. Hey, what we'll probably do if you get here at 6, go to the kitchen. And if you want a hamburger, hot dog, I do understand that there is an ice cream contest going on between the security team and the deacons. Is that right? So you might want to bring you a double bowl. A Jethro bowl when I grew up. You know what a Jethro bowl is? So you might want to bring you a good bowl. We'll get some ice cream. We'll eat a little bit. Then we'll come in here and we'll have a lot of fun in the concert. Then we'll go outside, time permitting, if there's no bad, bad, bad weather. And then we'll enjoy a fireworks show, okay? So, hey, please come tonight. I promise it's going to be enjoyable, going to be fun. We'll set some stuff up for the kids in the gym where they can have some fun for a little bit. And then we'll dismiss and come in here, okay? Hey, if you got any questions, call somebody other than me. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to do the best we can. Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, remember the campus is closed on Tuesday. 
and praying for these dear ladies, for Miss Julie this week. Did we get any word on Angie? Not yet. Okay. I'll do a call and post and let you know when those services are, okay? Hey, our deacon of the week is Ron Hall. I think he was in the early service. Is he here? He's gone? Hey, I'll pray for us. We'll be dismissed. Have a good day in the Lord. Hey, it's hot, so y'all please be careful. Father, we love you. And uh, Lord, I, I wish I could say that every time I'm in a difficult situation that I handle it right, but I can't. So deliver me from evil. God, help me to respond in a biblical way to the difficulties of this life. And Father, when we see things that we know are wrong, help us not to be arrogant or judgmental, but help us to in love, do what we can, say what we can. Sometimes we just have to be quiet so that, Father, your name will be glorified. Thank you that, that you're there with us, and you never leave us, and you never forsake us. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good day in the Lord. See you tonight, 6 o'clock.